Ladies and gentlemen, today we will be covering one of the coolest Broncos on the planet. From engine specs to body upgrades, we will be covering it with none other than John Link. John, YouTube. YouTube John. YouTube, how you doing? Now, not only will we be covering all of the upgrades and different things that John has done to this beast, you guys have seen it on the channel before and he's been doing a lot of work to it, but John has also promised to Smith slap me. <laughs> oh, wow. If I didn't take this thing for a spin. <laughs> so, uh, I guess we'll see how that goes, but uh, stick around for that, because that's going to be pretty epic. Now before we dive into all of that, I do have to mention the fact that if you are not subscribed already, do not hit the subscribe button. You do not want to see what happens when you press the button. Just trust me. Aside from that, if you haven't watched the previous videos on John's Bronco, make sure you click the video, check it out, get the backstory on John and just what makes this vehicle so special and maybe it'll give you a push to start your own project. With that said, John. Give us the lowdown. This thing has obviously been under the surgical dagger. What's been left on the kitchen floor? What have you done to it? What's new? Tell us about it, fill us in. So the rock rat was out of commission. I don't know, it's probably been about six months. Uh, she was actually on a paid gig, not too far from home. I don't know, a lot of companies like to use it as a backdrop, whatever. Anyway, did the deal. There was models there, all kinds of stuff. Coming home, probably about 20 miles from home. I'm buzzing maybe 2200 RPM, and then all of a sudden, boom! I thought I hit the farmer's cow on a moped. This thing jumped up in the air. Oh my God, I, 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 I'm looking for carnage out the side mirror of something I hit. Was able to get pulled over really quick. I didn't see anything on the freeway, no blood trail, no nothing. So I sat there for a second. I got out of the Bronco, I looked underneath. There's nothing leaking, there's nothing. I popped the hood, everything looks okay. Went to turn the key again, and uh, yeah, Houston, we had a problem, big problem. So anyway, I had a buddy of mine, record service, come down, pick me up. Next morning, I had a friend come over, and uh, he's got one of the cameras you can run up into the cylinders. So we pulled, you know, the very first plug, we got lucky, we pulled the, the plug out, and it looked like it had been gapped with a uh, sledgehammer. Man, oh man, the carnage. I, I, I can't believe I did not blow a hole in, through the side of the block. Right now, you have no idea why the engine blew. I still to this day, and that was six, six and a half months ago. I mean, I just, I, I've been scrambling trying to get this thing kind of back together, and I haven't tore the other engine apart. I think I dropped the valve, and it just disintegrated everything inside that cylinder. I mean, again, I don't know why I didn't blow a hole in the side of the block. I guess before we dive into the new engine that you've got in there, because you haven't revealed that yet, let's talk about some of the body stuff you did. Because obviously it started with the engine, you know, and then you decided to go down the rabbit hole, which we have all done before. <laughs> I've done it before, not to the extent that you have, but kind of kind of talk about some of the stuff that you've done to, to the body. We'll go with that, and then we'll get into the fun stuff, which is the engine. So where it started off is, okay, I was in a dilemma. Okay, what am I going to put back in here for an engine? So I, it kind of put me on hold, and I had a lot of this stuff ripped off the Bronco. So I started kind of looking at a few things, and I don't. a lot of you guys that have seen the other videos of the Bronco, my son had actually done the fenders all in sheet metal. And I kind of got looking at those, and the way that he had done the fenders, it's probably my fault, but there was a lot of spots that didn't have enough seam sealer, and they were catching water. So there was a lot of rot, and they were starting to get carnage in there. And I really, really wanted to leave you know what he had done on the Bronco but it just got to the point where I, I just I couldn't repair them I couldn't fix them so I wound up cutting them off and I wound up going with the Gorilla War flares because that's what he would have wanted anyway both these front fenders are brand new because it was just they were beyond repair so I put brand new fenders from you guys on repunched them I've got my power steering coolers back underneath and so they let out a lot of heat so we wound up doing that. And then, you know, the back, I, I was able to repair good enough and get the Gorilla War flares on there. And then what we wound up doing is 
You know, a lot of you guys have seen the video Mitch had me in with the corner guards. I wound up modifying them because a lot of the guys with the, the fender flares, they either mash this down or they wind up leaving it open where you have the airflow. Well, I had everything tore apart, so I figured, you know what? Underneath, I've got the sheet metal, body sheet metal modified. So these are actually sitting on somewhat factory sheet metal and just kind of wanted a little bit of a different look, a little bit of a cleaner look. That's where we're at. And then that entails. I think, John, you're like the, the definition of the perfectionist. You may not be a Bronco purist, <laughs> but as far as, as not having anything that people can really pick apart on the Bronco, you, you're probably right up there with, with the best. Because doing something as kind of gnarly as that, you know, and as simple as that, it actually makes me not want to go look at my Bronco <laughs> and, and pick out all of this stuff. But I, I think that for you guys watching, at home if you ever get a chance to see this in person I wouldn't say try to find something wrong with it but you know if you do I think you're gonna have a very hard time because John does things like that that take hours at a time or maybe you're just good enough you like 10 minutes in. John took hours at a time John does not have a full-blown machine shop John's got a, a kick butt handheld bandsaw a grinder a really good welder and uh, some cordless drills. That's what John's got at home, and that's what pretty much built the Bronco. We wound up getting her painted, and I've got all my sponsor logos back on. One of the really important things is my son, before he passed away, he wanted to start the company called Fat Rat Customs. You know, he had some logos drawn up. We wound up going with the Daddy Rat from Ratatouille. That was my wife and daughter. And I've got a wrench drawn in here, the day he was born, his name, and the day he passed away. So, I mean, we're not really a legit company. And we went barn built since 1960. That's when I was born. Let's like really age things here. But that was just kind of like the cherry on the cake for my son. And, you know, I do, I get a lot of, you know, messenger deals, uh, things on Facebook. Where's this Fat Rat Customs located? Well, that's, you know, Looney Larry here in my garage. It's just a tribute to my son. A lot of you Bronco folks out there know, you know, the factory hoods, especially if they're an original, they're susceptible right along this line here. They start getting a lot of cracks. Well, my son had kind of built the hood, basically what we kind of got here right now but it was heavy. I took it and weighed it. I think it was 137 pounds the way it was. I mean, it was heavy, but we started getting a lot of cracks and I'd done over the years, a lot of repairs. And it just kind of got to the point where I just, I, I, I was running out of welding wire. I couldn't do it anymore. So anyway, I made the decision to come down here. I got a pro flow hood from you guys. And then I got the upper scoop and put that on. So actually the look of this hood, the, the way I've got it set up, it's almost identical to what my boy had. So, and then we wound up doing a carbon fiber wrap and that's kind of like the exterior modifications. And I guess one of the biggest exterior modifications is I painted all my logos out black, but I added this little logo right here. A lot of you folks out there that kind of know me, you know, my, my main deal is why be normal? So I'm still trying to figure out, okay, I blew up my last engine and I, I can't get my 427 I want because they can't get the race block. So why be normal? What, what do I want to put in this thing that's going to be the furthest from normal? It's either going to be a, a 12 valve Cummins, which man, the weight was just going to just kill me, or I wound up putting in a, a Ford Performance Z460. That's what we wound up going with. And I figured, you know, it'd be just kind of a pretty easy little shoehorn in there. Yeah, not so much. Uh, I had to move a lot of stuff, three quarters of an inch. I had to do this. There were some bloody knuckles. Uh, there was a little bit of cussing, whatever, but we got it in there. And the engine in here, it dynoed uh, 575 to uh, uh, torque and 575 on a horse. I've done a few more modifications since then, and we've kind of got those numbers up a little bit higher and it's still drivable. I had it down in Southern California, my fuel injection, Phytech, they did some magic on this thing. Man, I haven't had it on the trail, you know, so I, I don't know what my first off-road event is gonna be. I'll be down here for the Wild Horse Roundup. I probably still only have maybe a couple hours of runtime on it, but this thing just runs like, oh my God. Road manners is still dialed. Dialed in, you can go 70, 75 mile an hour down the road, and it'll track all day long. It's not wandering, it's not, jumping around it's just and if you want to turn it your little pinky 
and away you go. And what do you think? A couple revs is like a hundred bucks each, or what? Uh, yeah, I found out that you know I, I put some race fuel in here, 100 <laughs> octane. I still really don't know what kind of fuel economy this thing gets. I, I'm my theory on that is who cares? Like it's gonna make you feel a little more sad if you if you know what you're getting. Yeah, well, I really don't. I, I don't care. I've got Look you know. Look at the smile on this guy's face, right? And, and wait till he drives it, because that smile is going to get 10 times bigger, and that's what it's all about. Well, it's, it's really about my daughter, Sophie, 15, because she is a huge part of it. She wanted to come down here today, because this is really, you know, her baby. She drives this thing like a just a wild Indian man going down the road. She's banging gears and just like, holy moly. Okay, so we talk about the engine, the 460. Let's uh, let's drive this puppy down the ramp. You guys will get to hear it start up, and then we'll we'll check out some of the stuff that you did underneath the hood. Plug your ears, ladies and gentlemen, and headphones. You got headphones. This is your warning right now. Did you have the, the struts before? I had the struts before. Lifting and, 137 pounds. <laughs> I don't think they're rated for that. <laughs> no, the struts before kind of got wore out really, really quick, lifting that, that weight. These are supposed to be for the fiberglass hoods, supposed to be mounted, I think, this way going in. The steel hoods are this way, but Homer Simpson cut this big hole uh, in the hood here. So I couldn't mount them the other way because I've got uh, these things kind of punching through and I couldn't push these down far enough to uh, get the hood to clear. It is what it is and it works really, really good. A lot of the stuff is pretty much all the same. I had the Hydra Boost on here before, but it was clocked and it was positioned different. And I had to move that over three quarters of an inch. And I figured, no big deal, easy money. Well, that turned into, I don't know, a day and a half project. I had to make this little spacer bracket between the hydro boost and the master cylinder. And again, it's half inch aluminum and cutting half inch aluminum with a jigsaw and a grinder is a little bit of work. Anyway, I got that all dialed in, but I had one hose also on here that was killing me because it was coming straight up. Well, I come down here and your dad, he went to his little private stash and he got me the banjo fitting and just saved my life and made everything great. For the most part, I've got a, a little bit of a different radiator. John and Rhonda from JB Fab, they've got the same radiator in Bad Pony. John told me, hey, Ron Davis built a radiator and it'll, it's cool in their twin turbo 427. So I had Ron Davis built me the radiator. I was able to get it in. At first I thought I was gonna be able to just get it in here. And actually I could have dropped the radiator in there just the way it was, but I had about a quarter inch clearance if I ever needed to change a belt on the trail. And I have a serpentine belt set up on here now, which that whole front end's all CVF, power steering pump, alternator, whatever. And it's like, man, if I got to change a belt on a trail, especially a serpentine, one serpentine, trouble in paradise. So I wound up cutting a sort core support, moved the radiator forward three quarters of an inch. It's still gonna be a little bit of a bear, but I got room to change it. And it sets, Vitek did the uh, EFI, that's their, their Go 400 uh, power adder, which is for supercharged and blown engines or people that have gnarly crazy cams. And other than that, I mean, she fired right up. I don't know how much bigger the 460 is from the 347, but like how much hacking did you actually have to do, if any at all, to fit this thick guy in here? The Hydra Boost was the ma main thing. Wow. Yeah, and I, I mean, if I have to get into that valve cover, I can. It's gonna be a little bit of work. But the Hydra Boost was the main thing. It's like, I, I don't know what I'm gonna wind up doing, but after I got that, everything kind of just dropped in. A little bit of bacon grease here and there, and she just kind of slipped in like... Just kind of slipped in, huh, John? But one of the things, too, is I'm running a little bit different header on this. I've got stainless steel exhaust pretty much brand new on the front side. My rear section, I, I'm doing a two into one. Where it goes out the back door, that's off the old motor, old setup, and everything's on a V-band clamp. I'm running the same muffler, but for some reason, the muffler, when it was on the 347, it was a little loud. Yeah, it was, it was loud. But on this thing here, oh, it's you can, loud. You can feel it in your chest when he revs. Yeah, that's when you know it's loud. 
So that's pretty much the uh, rock rat. She's back. I'm excited to kind of get out to some events. So, dude, I'm the fact that you did this in the time you did, the amount of work you did, you are, you're a madman. Well, yeah, I've been called different. I, madman's here. Thank you. I appreciate that. The Bronco mad scientist. I totally, I totally dig it. Like I said uh, earlier, if any of you guys are able to check this rig out in person, you can't keep a list of the stuff that he's done to this thing. Like it, when, once you get into the interior, you'll just give up even trying because it's like a, an airplane cockpit in there. Like there's so many, so many buttons. But I'm going to probably blow this thing up just no. pressing the wrong buttons, man. <laughs> There we go. That is the walk around for the rock rat. Uh, again, John's been busy and uh, we just wanted to keep you guys updated on some of the stuff he's doing because like at Wild Horses, you know, we've got some cool Broncos here. At least we like to think we do. And this to us is like the coolest Bronco on the planet just because of the story, because the guy who built it and because of, of everything that it is. So, you know, the main thing is going back to the story. This thing was a, a total wreck. You know, when I bought it from my son, probably 16 years ago for his 15th birthday. He did a lot of work on it. His buddies did a lot of work on it. My daughter's done a lot of work on it. And I've had friends. I mean, I'll tell you what, I mean, this last six months, I couldn't have been where I'm at without some really good friends coming over and pitching in and helping me. I'm sure I still got a few little things I got to tweak and dial, but there you go. I guess unless I want to get um, Chris rocked, uh, I'm going to have to take a spin, right? <laughs> I know this is a little bit different, but yeah, you're going to get in the, the cockpit and I, I want you to feel what this Pop-Tart's all about. I guess just the, the disclaimer for everybody watching is I have never driven something that had more than 400 horsepower. At least to my knowledge. And what does this thing have? Five? It's so oh, well, it's over 575. 575. So John's definitely putting me on the spot. But with that said, he's got some big hands. Rather than getting <laughs> smacked by him, I think I'm gonna hop in the driver's seat and take this thing for a rip. You are. Let's do it. Okay. I'm gonna need to get me one of these. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself now. Probably go clean my pants up a little bit. <laughs> now I almost wanna sit here in the passenger seat and let you rip it. Whatever floats your boat, dude. I wanna see what Crazy Man does to his rig. I haven't done no Crazy Man <laughs> yet. <laughs> Gotta take a rip with the madman himself. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The Rock Rat is back in action. I appreciate John. Thank you for coming out, hey, man. Thanks, this brother. thing was, was a total a blast. blast. I did get to drive this thing 570 something horsepower. It's indescribable. And the fact that it's in a Bronco. <laughs> so it was, it was sick. You know, it was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned a lot. Again, 
you're going to be at the Roundup, right? I will absolutely. The Roundup, if you got a Bronco and you're not at the Roundup, you're missing out. Yep, April 30th, guys. And then uh, the second day is May 1st. We'll be out at Prairie City having a blast out there. But come, check out John Driggs, see all the crazy stuff he's done to it. Take a peek inside at the airplane cockpit that he's got going on in there and try to make sense of it all. If you guys aren't subscribed already, I know I said in the beginning not to, and I'm going to stick by that. Do not hit the subscribe button. But if you feel like it, then you might as well hit the like button while you're at it. Leave a comment, let us know what you think of John's rig. All you haters can stuff it up your, um, I don't know, I'm not allowed to cuss. <laughs> this is a family channel, guys. You didn't actually think I was gonna say something bad, did you? With all of that being said, we will see you guys out there on the trail. Peace!